Hey everyone, me Kevin here. The Congressional Budget Office may have just dealt the final blow to the $15 minimum wage, as if it wasn't bad enough that Joe Biden came out and said in an interview that he doesn't actually think the minimum wage will pass as part of the stimulus package. The Congressional Budget Office released a report today on the impact that the new minimum wage could have on our country. Here are the bottom lines from the report. It was like 20 pages long. I read it all. Here are the bottom lines. Poverty would go down about 0.9%, or roughly about 1 million people would get out of poverty. However, 1.4 million people, so an extra 400,000 people, would end up losing their jobs to pay for people getting out of poverty. Well, 1 million people getting out of poverty. Which would mean more people end up without a job than would be lifted out of poverty. Also, real GDP, so inflation-adjusted gross domestic product, and investments would decline slightly as businesses end up investing less money due to higher labor costs. Businesses with the most input from lower waged workers would also likely see higher pricing as they have to pass some of the costs on to their customers. So particularly restaurants and food related businesses might actually see product prices go up and the amount of employees that they have go down. There is also a belief that there could be less investment into productive assets like machinery or computers. And usually when we think, oh, minimum wage goes up, companies are going to invest more money into technology and productivity related things. But the problem is machinery only does you good if you actually have people to work on those things. Kind of like if you have a staff of 100, you're going to buy more laptops than if you have a staff of 50. Now that's of course just what the Congressional Budget Office concluded. I do imagine that there would be some overall increase in uh, technological spending or automation that companies end up investing in, but that's what the CBO has been concluding. They also mentioned that uh, some of these changes could actually lead to a slight rise in inflation and overall inflation expectations could end up leading to higher interest rates over the next 10 years. My guess is this would be somewhere by about half percent. They just said slight increase so it's hard to tell, but they do expect that treasury bonds, their yields will go up a bit, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see Bitcoin go up if the minimum wage came around because, well, as people expect more inflation, Bitcoin tends to increase. Spending on SNAP program benefits would also likely decline as less people rely on nutritional support, but spending on social security by the government would actually go up as average benefits would go up since they're based on average wages in America. So the odds of us seeing the minimum wage in the next bill especially with this news here, probably less now, at least the way it's written. And the odds of us seeing this $15 per hour minimum wage in a future bill, uh, possibly also less now because Republicans are less likely to stand behind something that would definitely, or at least I should say likely, since these are estimates by the CBO, reduce the level of employment in the country. Now, Jen Psaki did say she's not sure yet if the minimum wage is definitely dead, that that's still being determined. Who knows? Maybe the minimum wage will end up in the stimulus package. And so, as usual, Jen Psaki will circle back to us. Now, on stimulus, at least uh, nine House committees have started working on the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, and the goal is having a complete package done by February 22nd. A new COVID relief deal has the support of roughly 70% of Americans. And specifically on stimulus checks, we still have our heads twisted and turned over who exactly is going to be eligible for these checks. Republicans want people making under $50,000 or $100,000 as a couple to be eligible for the full amount. Janet Yellen says that number should be $60,000 for individuals and $120,000 for couples. Bernie Sanders wants the original $75,000 and $150,000, and so far Biden hasn't committed yet. So I guess we'll wait for Jen Psaki to circle back on that one as well. Janet Yellen does say there is, quote, no reason to suffer a long, slow recovery, and either way, we need to make sure that this COVID relief package gets passed as soon as possible. Jen Psaki also dodged a question about universal basic income in her press conference this morning. Targeted EIDL grants are still going out, so make sure you check your email for an email from Disaster Customer Service at sba.gov. Make sure you don't reply to anything but a .gov. There are so many scammers these days. Scammers in the comments impersonating me asking you to text them. Don't reply to those. There's scam EIDL, PPP emails going out. You gotta be really, really careful these days. If something looks sus, Ask somebody else to double check it for you, <laughs> right? Uh, additionally, the impeachment trial begins tomorrow. We're not really expecting a surprise here. We think Donald Trump will get acquitted. 
Uh, we'll likely see a lot of media coverage about this, so we'll have an exhausting week of media coverage over impeachment. Donald Trump is not expected to testify at his own impeachment. Uh, we actually just straight up don't think he'll show up. Uh, his attorneys will, of course, to uh, make his case for him. I personally doubt we'll have more than 58 votes to convict Trump. That would mean eight Senate Republicans coming over. I don't even think we're going to have that. We need 67, and when I say we need the country, if the country wanted to convict Trump, the country needs 67 votes to convict Trump. I don't see it happening. Chuck Schumer says, quote, I bet if there was a secret ballot, they would convict Trump. So Chuck Schumer's kind of suggesting that because this is so public, Republicans are going to be very likely to stick along party lines and end up voting to acquit Donald Trump. And uh, based on Chuck Schumer's statement there, kind of implies that Chuck sees the same writing on the wall. Uh, so that does mean we could see a President Trump in 2024 because censure, which is an option Congress has, they could censure Donald Trump, does not necessarily ban you from being able to run for president again. The only way Congress could really do that is if they do convict Donald Trump by impeaching him or uh, convict him of impeachment, whatever, convict them of high crimes and misdemeanors, right? Uh, if that happens, then they could pass another bill to prevent him from running again but they can't pass that bill if they don't convict him. So censuring, another option, but not as much of a clear shot for preventing Donald Trump from running again. So the way things stand right now, we might have a very entertaining 2023 and four as that election cycle begins again. Anyway, that's the update for now. Thank you so very much for watching. If you found it helpful, consider sharing the video. Use coupon code HODL via the courses down below. It's a new coupon code HODL, H-O-D-L. And folks, We'll see you in the next video.